Hello, it is my pleasure to present a paper, Everywhere But Nowhere, Development Experiences of the International Game Developers in Finland During the COVID-19 Pandemic and Remote Work. I'm Solid Park, the lead author of this paper. My co-authors are Dr. Anna Kaisa Kultima, Professor Mika J. Lehtonen, and Janine Kath. We did qualitative research on international game developers' work experiences during COVID-19 as an attempt to investigate the local context of game development in this pivotal moment. Video games are now being developed in a complex global value chain in multicultural work environments. For example, here in Finland, it is estimated that 28% of its game developers are coming from abroad, according to a report in 2021. So we asked, how did remote work influence on the job and off the job embeddedness of expatriate game developers in Finland during the COVID-19 pandemic? Before we start, the term game expatriates in this paper, abbreviated as game expats, refers to game development practitioners that experienced either assigned or self-initiated migration, primarily due to their game profession, with or without concrete long-term future plans for settlement, directly or indirectly due to precarious job contracts of the video game industry. The game development process is inseparable from its local cultural context, as the practices vary per market, company, and team. It also tends to migrate from one place to another. Therefore, studying the individual experiences of game developers offer valuable insights into the local neons of game development practices. But on the other side, various studies reported hyper-individualism and passion-driven labor normalized within the game industry. A wealth gap and marginalization and inequality have also been criticized. Game works tends to be precarious with short-term contracts and rapidly changing market trends. In terms of remote work, recent studies have identified positive emotions and job satisfaction and an end and autonomous work style was encouraged. However, social isolation and perceived barriers to career enhancements also tend to impact workers in remote conditions with reduced social interactions and a lack of emotional cues. So from there, we conducted 27 semi-structured interviews with game expats in Finland. We asked about their experiences of remote work and activities during the pandemic. All participants were gathered on a voluntary basis through an online registration form published on the local game dev communities. Our participants were from various regions with more male senior game developers. Interestingly, 19 claimed that they had worked at other countries before coming to Finland, indicating frequent job-related relocations. We focused on coherent patterns that emerged from the data and referenced two frameworks while categorizing the codes into themes. One was game design praxeology by Gultima, and another was a push-pull migration model that elucidates migration intentions in three categories, push, pull, and shock. Based on this, we identified four factors that affect game expats' migrant intention, societal national factors, industrial factors, social factors, and individual factors. Our data indicated that both societal and industrial factors corresponds with game expats' migrant intentions, but in another way around. Societal factors influence game expats' short-term settlement intention during the pandemic, particularly the host country's governmental measure in dealing with the crisis. In contrast, the industrial factors were a strong push on the interviewee's long-term settlement intention, which demands game experts ready to be relocated everywhere, anywhere, whenever necessary. We noticed that activities within the game company remained quite the same thanks to well-established remote work routine in the game industry, such as frequent use of online messengers, cloud tools, global production chains, etc., even prior to the pandemic. But not surprisingly, game expats suffer from the absence of the local community during the pandemic, as most of their social activities were limited to the sources of their employer. Interestingly, game expats expressed stress on remote work, including the ones who worked remotely even before from the pandemic. Some even expressed higher motivation to re-expatriate. From there, we notice an internal binary distinction shared amongst our game expats, talking about a hierarchical gap between those with access to a physical workplace 
such as in-house game devs, and versus those with obvious physical distance, such as outsourcing and freelance game developers. So what this tells us, First, the growing dominance of corporately social bubble. As game expats experiencing the host country mainly through their game companies, it nurtures its workforce to become more everywhere but nowhere, a regionless corporate-driven occupational identity ready to be relocated at any time. Second, the class stratification and the invasion of remote work to the once prestigious workspace. Even with the norms of remote work within the game industry, game express, express stress and concerns. We think this has less to do with the transitional shift to remote work in the pandemic, but more about the concerns of their effort being devalued now that remote work is becoming more common. Implication-wise, our study demonstrated the value of studying the cases of game expats. Game expats' experiences offer valuable insights into how game development is being interpreted, migrated, and practiced across culture and regions. For game companies, we urge further communal efforts with local communities, which could help local game companies to reinforce balanced cultural integration of their talents and thus secure their recruits for the longer term. Our paper was based on a relatively small number of qualitative interviews with more senior male respondents. Thus, it should not be generalized to represent the game industry as a whole yet. Also, the current research is documenting one specific point in time. So perhaps a longitudinal research setting in the future could reveal more about the expatriations of game developers. Thank you for your time listening and reading our paper. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. You can also check out my webcomic Game Expat Story on social media, which is an artistic research democratization effort that illustrates academic findings for public viewers. Thank you.